US President Joe Biden has just wrapped up his opening address to the NATO summit. Our North America correspondent Barbara Miller is there. Barbara, good morning to you. What's he had to say? I guess you described it as a bit of a, a stirring address. He paid tribute to NATO. He said it was stronger than ever. That's 75 years uh, since the alliance was first formed here in the U.S. capital. Uh, his voice as he delivered that address was pretty strong. He was reading from a teleprompter because, because of course, the overriding question here is, is Joe Biden OK following that uh, pretty disastrous debate performance. He certainly was able to read uh, from the teleprompter. Sometimes, as you know, uh, Joe Biden's sentences do sort of trail off a bit and he seems to lose a bit of volume towards the end of a sentence. But it was pretty good on the whole. And he did mention Ukraine. A big focus of the next few days uh, is going to be NATO's support for Ukraine. Vladimir Zelensky is here. He'd like to see commitments for more air defence systems, more F-16s and in general, more political political and financial support. Let's hear just a, a little bit of Joe Biden now on the topic of Ukraine. We know Putin won't stop at Ukraine, but make no mistake, Ukraine can and will stop Putin. Now, we do expect announcements of further aid, possibly also from Australia. Australia, as a, as a partner country to NATO, is represented uh, here at the summit by Deputy Prime Minister Richard Marles. And there's also a sense, Lisa, that perhaps some of this is about Trump proofing NATO's support for Ukraine. For example, the Americans are telling us uh, we will hear about a military command set up in Germany where NATO takes control of equipping and training Ukrainian soldiers. The idea that this is a kind of bridge towards NATO membership. I think President Zelensky has realized now that a membership card is not coming anytime soon. But the members here really want to give a sense in case Donald Trump is elected and in case he pulls uh, through on that threat to perhaps pull out of NATO, that they have other structures in place uh, to continue to support Ukraine as, as of course, the war uh, after Russia's invasion drags on. Mm. Barbara, of course, it wasn't just about what Joe Biden was saying. It was about how he looked, how he performed, essentially, those questions about his fitness for office still going on? I think, you know, that this kind of um, doesn't, you know, it doesn't change anyone's opinion. It, it was a decent address. He got through it. As I said, his voice was pretty strong at times. But we've seen him put in a couple of performances like this, or several really, since the debate uh, out on the campaign trail, or for example here in DC, giving uh, comments on a Supreme Court decision where he reads from the teleprompter uh, and he does okay. So those Democrats or members of the American public who uh, think that he perhaps should move on, should make way for another candidate for the 2024 presidential election, I don't think tonight's performance changed those opinions. What we're all now focusing on in terms of this aspect of the story, Joe Biden, is a press conference he said he'll give at the end of these three days here at this venue. Uh, it's being described by the White House as a big boy press conference. That is an open press conference where they're suggesting uh, it won't be controlled, that he will take uh, a lot of questions uh, from members of the media. And as you can imagine, there certainly are an awful lot of questions uh, that they will be putting to him and an awful lot of eyes will be on that performance to see how that goes.